Hey, hey, fellow YouTubers, JJ the Trucker coming to you from Salt Lake City, Utah. I am at the Freightliner dealership, and uh, I'm going to get this video out right away. I know that sometimes there's a delay in my videos, um, and if you uh, watch my videos, you, you know why. But um, I'm getting this video out to you right away because I really want your, your thoughts and opinions. And I'm not carrying a load right now, so, uh, you know, I uh, don't mind uh, tossing this video out right away. So, here's what I'm looking for. I want your opinions, your honest and, and knowledgeable opinions and thoughts and experience more than anything about the different types of, uh, of OTR trucks that are out there right now. Um, what you like about them, what you don't like about them, uh, what your experiences with them, uh, with them are, good or bad. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not looking for bashing. Um, if you've had a negative experience with, uh, with the truck, you know, fine you know put that the factual information in there and and uh what your thoughts are but i'm not looking for like that hardcore just mean bashing uh there's no need for that it's not what my channel's about i like to try and keep it light and positive uh but i do want you know your guys's personal experiences on these different types of trucks so why am i posting this video um you know i've, I've been in this freightliner now uh for about six months um, and you know the creature comforts on this freight line are really nice. I do like a lot of things about it um, It's got you know uh, the, the, the sleeper berth is really nice it's spacious a lot of uh, uh, storage uh, the, the the mattress is, is nice not the one that comes with it, but uh, you can get a mattress It's it's a twin XL size mattress So you can buy one at any mattress store some of these bigger truck stops uh, Sheets you can get sheets for them real easy. That's not the case with uh, with, with all the trucks that are out there a um, lot of good creature comforts, a lot of good tech that's in this truck uh, that I really, really like. Um, but the things that I don't like about it, um, number one is the ride. Man, the ride in this truck is rough. They, you know, they, they call these things freight shakers. They need to call them driver shakers. Um, I, I get why they call them freight shakers, not freight liner, duh. But uh, man, I, sometimes I feel like just going down these roads, I just need to, to take my hand, tie it up on the steering wheel, Put my other hand in there. Woo, yeah, rhyme cowboy. Ah, hoo, hoo. Man, because I'm just going down the road, just bouncing up and down and back and forth. And man, it's just <clears throat> the ride is not smooth in these things. Now, I don't know if that's just all trucks um, or if it's really freight liners. I've heard that uh, other trucks, especially like Peterbilt's, ride a lot smoother due to the uh, due to the uh, the extended length of the the drive. Uh, uh, I can't even think of what it's called right now. I think I just shook my brain a little too much. Uh, but anyways, the, uh, the, the wheelbase, uh, the longer wheelbase, um, helps it with the smoother ride. It just holds the ground better. That's kind of what I've been hearing out there. So, um, but uh, the other reason, I'm, um, to the three reasons. So that was the first reason. Second reason, I've only been in a Freightliner. Um, my three trainers all had Freightliners, 2017, 2018, 2019. Now I've got a 2020. Um, so nothing but uh, Freightliners in my experience. I've never driven or ridden in anything else, uh, which is what I really, really want you guys' uh, experience and, and thoughts and everything there. Um, next is um, I'm at the shop right now. I'm at the repair shop because I broke down. Um, I'm going, I've got a whole other set of videos that I'm recording uh, regarding this experience. That's going to be my next video that will come out. Uh, but, yeah, I broke down. Um, I'm 90% sure it's the fuel pump that is that just it died and went bad. Um, this truck's not even a year old. How 115,000 miles? How is a truck that's not even a year old uh, with 115,000 miles going to break down and leave me on the side of the road? You know, uh, while we try and get this figured out, and I got to get towed. And of course, it was BFE Wyoming. Uh, so yeah, I had to get towed. Four hours away. Um, whew, yeah, so that's a that's a bit of a concern, you know. It, now maybe that's all trucks and everything, um, but it just seems like a year, not even a year old, and, and the truck's breaking down like that. It's, you know, kind of kind of starts going along with other with what other people have been saying uh, about Freightliners. Of course, the the uh, the, the tow driver, uh, tow truck driver uh, Jeff that I was talking to uh, last night. Uh, says that he man he doesn't like freightliners because they're breaking down all the time. Um, now I don't know how accurate that necessarily is, considering you know he's towing out of Salt Lake City. And if you've ever been to Salt Lake City, Salt Lake City is 
like Freightliner capital uh, is what it seems. Everywhere I look is just Freightliners. Um, Prime is out here. 90 to 95 percent of their trucks uh, are Freightliners. Um, Expo, Knight, CR England, um, Pride. There's a whole bunch of other companies, uh, trucking companies, that are out here, and they run Freightliners. Everywhere you look is a Freightliner. So, yeah, I, I can, you know, I can definitely see where, you know, where Jeff's got to tow a lot of Freightliners. And it's easy to get that kind of mentality of, oh man, all I'm towing is Freightliners. Freightliners must be terrible. Freightliners must break down all the time because that's all I'm towing is Freightliners. Um, but then again, you know, it could be true. So, um, so there's the reliability, and I've heard other reliability uh, things uh, when it comes to Freightliners. So, you know, that's why I want to kind of, you know, keep my mind open and keep my eyes open for other trucks. So let's talk about the other trucks. We're going to talk about, uh, well, we're not going to talk about Western Star because Western Star is pretty much Freightliner. Um, I don't even know if they have an OTR model, uh, but it's, it's the same thing. So let's just, let's skip Western Star. We're going to talk about, uh, of course, Freightliners, which we just did. Uh, we're going to talk about um, Peterbilt's, uh, Internationals, uh, Mac, Kenworth, I think that is pretty much, uh, pretty much the, oh, and Volvo, uh, so Volvo, let's, uh, let's start, so, Peterbilt's, um, the other two options I've got, other than Freightliner, uh, when it comes to getting a truck through Prime, and being able to have them work on it, are the Peterbilt's and the Internationals, so Peterbilt's, um, I hear a lot of really good things about Peterbilt's, and then I hear, you know, a lot of negatives about Peterbilt's, uh, so I know there's a lot of pluses and minuses about them. Uh, number one, reliability. Um, I definitely hear a lot more about reliability when it comes to Peterbilt, especially compared to Freightliners and the other, and some of the others. Um, the uh, reliability and and the ride. Uh, I hear that the ride is much smoother uh, due to the longer wheelbase, uh, but the longer wheelbase makes it to where the turning radius is terrible, from what I've heard. I hear it, it takes 40 acres to turn that truck around. I think there's a song about that uh, out there somewhere, one of the old songs. Um, you know, so plus and minus on that one. Uh, reliable, yes, but when it does break down or if any maintenance that needs to be done, it's expensive, like really expensive, a lot more expensive than uh, Freightliners. Um, so I guess there's that plus and minus part there. Um, the uh, These... Um, these Peterbilts have the pack car engines in them, uh, which I've heard a lot of uh, a lot of good things. Oh, don't. Ooh. Got really windy out there all of a sudden. Wow, a dust storm just blowing on through out of nowhere. Um, anyways, uh, my trucks rocking back and forth. Ooh, fun. Um, or was I, oh, so it's got the pack car engines, which I hear in Europe are, are fantastic. You know, pack car engines are great. Um, everybody knows how to work on them out there. But here in the States, not a lot of people know how to work on them yet. Um, and and it's um, they're, they're harder to work on, harder to get, you know, get into the shop. Um, you know, Volume is at 100%. Thanks, Nagatha. I wasn't even talking to you. Exit. Exit. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah, so like Freightliner, I, I got here on a Sunday. They, they're not open on Sundays uh, for, for service, but they're going to get me in tomorrow. I've heard with Peterbilt, it's gonna, it'll take days to get in, uh, like three, four, five days sometimes to get in. Um, and then they've got, you know, not a whole lot of experience with the pack cars. Um, again, that's what I've heard. Please share your experience with me. Um, repairs, again, uh, are more expensive. Parts are more expensive, things like that. Um, creature comforts. Um, I've heard that the new 2020 Ultra Loft is a lot better. Um, it has a lot more room than the than the older Peterbilt's did. Um, I'm not sure on the whole mattress part if it's got standard mattress or if it's still a custom size mattress, which means custom size sheets. Um, I do know that the refrigerator is still small. You have to pretty much get their refrigerator, which is a really tiny little refrigerator. Um, and I'm big on refrigerator space. I like having the big refrigerator that Freightliner uh, has the space for. Um, you know, I try and eat healthy. I am back on my diet and exercise program because uh, I've got a, a, a vacation coming up. Yeah, I'll be telling you about that when that comes up. 
Um, so I definitely want more refrigerator space than a Peterbilt has to offer. I'd have to basically remove the passenger side seat and put a, a refrigerator in there, uh, a big refrigerator in there if I did that. You know, so a little bit of an inconvenience, but I guess that can be done. Um, and some of the newer uh, Peterbilts, I've been hearing from some of the drivers that it seems like they're rushing the builds. They're not building them as nicely. You know, the wires hanging out, um, you know, ex exterior wires hanging out, you know, things not, not lining up straight, you know, things like that. So I don't know. Uh, please share your experience with me on that. Uh, internationals, feel free to share anything with an international if you've got it. Any time, and I'm not talking about these nice looking internationals with the the nice looking grills that look like a, a shield and you know like a, like battle armor or anything. Those ones really look cool. But no, the OTR uh, version of the uh, the new internationals that that we get are just basic looking. They there's nothing spectacular about them. I've never heard anybody say, "Oh yeah, I love my international." International, you know, from Prime or the new internationals. I just hear it's a truck. It is what it is. Or yeah, it's pretty much all they had when I when I was picking out a truck. <laughs> you know. So if you've got anything on the internationals, please feel free to share it. Other than that, they just seem like a, a generic truck, to be honest. Um, the other trucks, um, the Volvos, uh, the uh, Max, and the Kenworths. If I were to get one, I'd have to finance it. I couldn't go through Prime. Um, I know there's pluses and minuses on, on finance versus lease. Um, check out my leasing video uh, for more information on that and why, um, while there are a lot of downsides to leasing, the lease that pr uh, Prime and Success Leasing has um, is is actually top notch. Uh, it doesn't compare with a lot of the other leases that are out there. So please no lease bashing in this video. Go to my lease video and watch that whole thing first if you have any uh, comments you want to put on leasing versus financing. Uh, but I would have to finance one of those trucks. The number one downside is that Prime cannot work on those trucks. They are not contracted to work on those trucks. So any type of maintenance, any type of repairs, routine stuff, anything other than a PM. They can do a PM. That's about it. But uh, replacing shocks, replacing air filters, replacing anything, they, um, they can't do it. Um, I'd have to go to an authorized dealer uh, in order to do that. So that's more time, that's more money, it's more inconvenience. Um, right there, negative. Um, let's talk the Volvos first. Volvo, the VNL 860. If I was going to get one, it would be a VNL 860 fully loaded. Those things on the inside are gorgeous. Man, go check out a tour of those things. All the creature comforts you could ever want, and then some. Um, even a reclining uh, bed, mattress set up with a table that comes out. Oh my God. Uh, I, I fell in love with that truck. If, if I was gonna get one, it would probably be that, just for that reason alone. Um, downsides is I don't I think the mattress is custom so you have to get it through them which limits mattress options uh, sheets I think you have to get through them um, so lim limits options on those you know things like that um, I think the refrigerator is still smaller uh, but but a little bit better um, I'd have to double check on that um, let's see the ride I hear on the Volvos are just so smooth so nice uh, that would be really nice uh, the downsides is uh, again repairs. Uh, really expensive, like super expensive, more than the than the Peterbilts, from what I hear. Um, and again, gotta find a Volvo dealership, which they're not as as common as a Peterbilt or a Kenworth uh, dealership. Um, so you gotta find them to to do any kind of work on them, uh, and they're more expensive. The longer waits uh, to get work done, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you know, pluses and minuses on those things. Um, let's see, uh, Kenworths. Kenworths are powerful trucks, man. Um, I've not heard, I don't think I've heard a single bad thing about a Kenworth ever. Um, I've heard they're really, really nice, great, powerful trucks. Problem is when you bring a powerful truck to prime, uh, they have to be derated, um, in order to, uh, meet up with prime's fuel specifications, fuel standards and, and power standards. Prime requires it. That is one of the negatives about Prime, uh, but again, being a new driver, I'm okay with that because I'm still learning. I don't need to be barreling down the road at 
you know, 75, 80 miles an hour at this point. Uh, so I'm fine with that, but you know, it takes one of the bigger things about uh, about these trucks, about uh, you know, Kenworths and and Max, and just tosses them out the window. Um, uh, and again, I'd have to do financing. The Prime can't work at it, work on those on the terminals, um, so I'd have to go to a Kenworth dealership. Um, creature comforts, I haven't really heard a lot about creature comforts when it comes to them. I've heard that they that they ride nice and that they are very reliable. Um, so th that's nice. I hear a lot of super truckers and older truckers loving their Kenworths. Um, I don't hear a lot about the Kenworths from new drivers. Uh, so I would like to get a new driver's perspective on that. Um, and again, what the creature comforts are. I guess there are a lot of options uh, when it comes to, to the Kenworths. So uh, yeah, any information you want to share on those, please do. And Mac. Let's talk about Mac. Mac... Um, I love the body style of the new Max. Man, to me, that, that's my favorite body style. Watching a Mac coming up in my, in my mirror, I'm just sitting there looking at those going, oh, God, those are nice. I really like those. Um, but again, Macs are known for their power, which again, staying at prime, that takes it away. Um, takes away that whole advantage. Um, I've heard they're much smaller on the inside, not a lot of room, not a lot of creature comforts. Uh, they look great. They're reliable, um, but that's pretty much all you get with the Mac um, other than that. So, again, any information you want to share uh, when it comes to the Macs, I'm, uh, I'm all ears. I'd like to hear about it. All right. Uh, let's see. What's next? Oh, yes. Definitely what's next is what's right there. You see it? You see my face? If you're not a subscriber already, click on my face. Click on my face. Click on my face. I know you want to click on my face. There it is. It's right, right about there. Click on my face. Subscribe. Uh, like the video. I'd appreciate it. If you do like my videos, there's another video right about there uh, that's got more uh, more of my videos, uh, more of my information. I really like sharing with you guys, so I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.